So hi everyone, my name is Araf Malik. I'm a junior at AISD. Today I'm here to talk about the Forex market. Specifically, I'm going to talk about certain perceptions, negative perceptions about the Forex market, and I'm going to break them through logic, reasoning, and evidence. So now let us first understand what the Forex market is. The Forex market is the world's largest financial market. It has a daily turnover of around 918.4 billion dollars as of April 2023. Now some of you might be wondering, so what is this market or what's done in this market? So basically, the Forex market is the market for trading currencies. You have the free floating currencies of different countries around the world which are traded in the Forex market. For example, the US dollar, the Canadian dollar, the Australian dollar, the Japanese yen, the British pound, and etc. Now, as I've said before, I'm going to talk about certain negative perceptions about the Forex market. And as I, as I think about it, there are three major perceptions that people have about the Forex market which are extremely negative. The first one is that the Forex market is difficult. The second one is that the Forex market is risky. And the third one is that the Forex market is unreliable. So moving on to the first perception that the Forex market is difficult. And the reason many people have this perception is because when they start trading in the Forex market, they think that the Forex market is the same as the stock market. When you start trading in the stock market, you literally buy or sell a company. For example, if you want to trade Apple, you literally go buy Apple or you literally go and sell Apple. But that's not how it's done in the Forex market. In the Forex market, you can't literally go and buy the US dollar. You can't literally go and sell the US dollar. You can't do that. Because in the Forex market, currencies are listed as Forex pairs. As you can see in the slide, some of the world's most popular Forex pairs are the Euro slash USD, GPB slash USD, NZD slash USD, and etc. Now, if you see in the Forex pair, there are two currencies in one Forex pair. The Euro, which is the base currency, and the USD, which is the quote currency, in the Forex pair Euro slash USD. So when you buy the Forex pair Euro slash USD, what you're doing is you're buying the base currency, which is the Euro, and you're selling the quote currency, which is the USD, at the same time. And vice versa. When you sell the Forex pair Euro slash USD, you're selling the base, base currency, which is the Euro, and you're buying the quote currency, which is the USD. And that's how the Forex market operates. That's what happens when you buy or sell a Forex pair. Another reason people think that the Forex market is difficult is because when someone tells them that it's the world's largest market, they think that they probably need some license, they need this, they need that, they need this to trade in the Forex market. But that's not true at all. In order to trade in the Forex market, you ju just need to find a reliable broker and you just need to register yourself to that broker and you're done, you can start trading. So what are the documents you may need? Uh, different, different brokers have different requirements, but usually it's your passport or any ID card and it's your utility bill. And if you have them, you can start trading in the Forex market. The second perception about the Forex market is that the Forex market is risky. Is the Forex market risky? 100%. Any financial market in the entire world is risky. If you have no strategy, if you're gambling, if you don't know what you're doing, obviously it's gonna be risky. It's not just the Forex market, it's how life works. If you don't know what you're doing, obviously you're taking unnecessary risk. Now, there are two ways people mitigate those risks in the Forex market. The first one, which I'm going to talk about in depth in this TED talk, is using mathematical indicators. And the second one is using news releases, such as unemployment news, interest rate news, and etc. Now, focusing on the first one, using mathematical indicators. There are different mathematical indicators which you can, which you can use in the Forex market, such as the MACD indicator, the RSI indicator, the stochastic RSI indicator, linear regression indicator, and there are many more indicators like this. I'm gonna talk about three indicators in depth which I have personally tested in September 2023. The first indicator which I tested is the MACD indicator. I tested it against the Euro slash USD for the month of September 2023. And I found that it had an efficacy of 54.84%, sorry, 56.67%. So now you may be wondering, how do I use this indicator? It's very easy. As you can see, the MACD indicator has two lines, the MACD line and the signal line. When the MACD line crosses above the signal line, that's a buy signal. When the MACD line crosses down the signal line, that's a sell signal. And using this, I tested it, and I found it had efficacy of more than 50%, which means that if you were to trade using this, you would be making decent profits in the Forex market. 
The second indicator that I tested was the RSI indicator. The RSI indicator is also very easy to use. It has a value between 0 and 100. When the value of the RSI indicator drops below 30, it means that the forex pair is undervalued and it's a buy signal. And when the value of the RSI indicator goes above 70, it means that it's overvalued and it's a sell signal. Again, I tested it against the euro slash USD for the month of September 2023, and I found that it had an efficacy of around 43.33%. Now, some of you might be seeing this number and might be wondering to yourself that, oh, if I use this indicator, I will be making losses because it has an efficacy of less than 50%. No, that's not true at all. If you have a high reward to risk ratio, which I did around 1.5, you'd be still making profits in the Forex market, even if your indicator has an efficacy of less than 50%. This is because your additional profits would be greater than your additional losses. The third indicator which I tested was the linear regression indicator. This, lin this indicator is a little bit complicated because it uses mathematical concepts that are taught usually in ninth or 10th grade. So how to use this indicator? So basically, in the linear regression indicator, you have to first understand the slope of the line and the upper line, which is the blue line, and the lower line, which is the red line. So when the slope of the linear regression indicator is negative and the forex pair is touching the uppermost blue line, it's a sell signal. And when the slope of the linear regression indicator is positive and the forex pair is touching the lowermost red line, it's a buy signal. So again, I tested it against the euro slash USD for the month of September 2023, and I found that it had, a, it had an efficacy of around 54.84%, which again shows that if you were to use it, you'd be making decent profits in the Forex market. Now, obviously, there's some implications of the knowledge that we learned. The first implication is that the knowledge that I shared with you shows that there is a clear constructive strategy to make profits in the Forex market. That doesn't have to be based on gambling or speculation. I would also like to state one more thing. Whatever I'm saying in this video or this TED talk shouldn't be taken as an investment advice. You should do your own research before you start trading in the Forex market. The third perception about the Forex market is that the Forex market is unreliable. And this is also a very valid perception because if I come to you and say that the world's largest market doesn't have a headquarters, you'd be thinking that's a scam. And the reason the Forex market doesn't have any specific headquarters because it's a decentralized market. It's not controlled by any organization or any entity. And to understand the rich history of the forex market, you have to first understand when the first world's forex market was created or when the world's first forex market was founded. Asian Egyptians in 260 BCE were trading coins and currencies similar to what we do in the forex market. In addition to that, the world's first modern forex market was created in around 18, uh, uh, 1880, 1880 AD with the gold standard beginning that year. And you can make sure that you're trading reliably in the forex market by using reliable brokers, which are authorized by the, some of the world's best security agencies, such as the UK's FCA, the US's SEC, the Irish CBI, and etc. And obviously, there are some limitations of the things that I've said in this video. The first limitation is that there are some forex brokers which are unregulated. For example, they would, the most forex brokers which are unregulated are obviously scams. So it, you need to make sure that you're doing your own research before you start trading using a broker. You need to make sure your broker is authorized by a security agency, and it's better that they're authorized by the security agency that I've mentioned. The second limitation is that there are some location-based biases in the forex market. For example, if you're from some country in Africa or Asia, some forex broker would try to offer you high leverages, such as 1 is to 500. And if you were to trade using high leverages, you'd be making losses in the forex market. You're likely to make more losses in the forex market. And the reason these brokers can legally offer you high leverages is because you are probably from a country which is not under the jurisdiction of the securities agency I've mentioned. Another limitation of the forex market is that the mathematical indicators that I've talked about, their value or their efficacy rate is nothing concrete. It may change in the future. It may increase, which is good, or it may decrease, which is bad. So those numbers that I've mentioned, they're not concrete. They may change in the future. And the final limitation, and this is the biggest one, is the limitation of the forex market itself. The forex market is nothing perfect. In the FX scandal of 2013, it was found out that several of the world's biggest banks, such as HSBC, UBS, these banks were manipulating the forex market to their advantage. And it was also found out that they were manipulating the forex market in a way that made other retail traders or traders who, are, who don't have a lot of money lose a lot of money. So basically, that means that the forex market is not perfect. It, there, might, there might be times where you may have unfair advantage, and there might be times where you will be losing money in the forex market because it's out of your control. 
So I hope that through my TED talk, I was able to show you some of the negative perceptions about the Forex market, and I hope that I was able to break them through logic, reasoning, and evidence. Thank you.